I'm Jamie Ward. From the beginning, we followed the case that captured nationwide attention. We've been checking in with police all day, and here's the very latest. On May 25th of 2012, a masked man carrying a gun walked through this door. That man was Kevin Well Noah, but he never walked out with what he came for. While Sergeant Roxby is the liaison here in Warwood, his interest in this neighborhood lies deeper. After two press conferences held by authorities this evening, there are more answers, but still a lot of questions, and authorities are now focused on finding a motive. While the welding program is not new at West Virginia Northern, this facility is. The national media has converged on Steubenville. Over the next few days, the eyes of the nation will be here on the Jefferson County Justice Center. Inside right now, two teams are standing trial for rape. Residents here are looking for justice for the victim, and there's no doubt this case has torn the city apart. Right now on the scene, Wheeling Hospital has confirmed that three people were transported there as a result of this incident. For much of the next hour, the focus will be on the cast and crew that will be here walking the red carpet. We continue our 30 days of special reports aimed at making our community a safer place. Prescription drug abuse is a big problem in West Virginia, but it doesn't only hurt the people who abuse those drugs. We've seen it happen, played out in courtrooms and on crime scenes. Worlds turned upside down, and the victims, like Stacey Hess, are left to pick up the pieces. Over by the register is where he jumped over the counter, over this way, his unfortunate final resting area is right behind me on the floor. Every day, Stacy Hess comes to work in the pharmacy where her life was turned upside down. For the longest time, we had a very hard time walking across that area until we moved the display behind me to cover up the area where it was. On May 25th of 2012, a masked man carrying a gun walked through this door. That man was Kevin Well Noah, but he never walked out with what he came for. He was shot and killed by the pharmacy's owner. Hess is asked all the time what was going through her mind when while Noah was holding a gun to her head. I was thinking that day at that time was what would my husband and kids do without me and will my daughter ever forgive me if I die today on her birthday. That emotional statement made the day Melody Fisher, while Noah's accomplice, was sentenced to 30 years behind bars. Learning how to let go of all the details after a year of remembering them. It's been difficult. Just the anger that I had that day and just disbelief that it was even happening. Hess has been in therapy since June of 2012. You just see more violence and it just seems like it's all evolving around drugs. Seeing it firsthand changed her forever. Okay, does he know who you are? I don't feel safe anymore. With bars now on the windows and other heightened security measures, the pharmacy is much safer, but that fear does not go away. That moment that somebody walks through the door and it's like, oh my gosh, it's going to happen again. And, and it's, it's not something that just goes away. It's something you deal with every single day. Your family deals with it every single day. My kids every day tell me, love you, before I go out the door because they don't know what's going to happen when I'm still here. While the road hasn't been easy for the Hess family, the tragedy brought them closer together. Just taking it day by day. I, I still don't sleep a whole lot. still have nightmares, but for the most part, just knowing that she's in jail and I don't have to worry about her for a long time. <laughs> Now these reports are about solutions and that's where the second part of this story comes in. Stacy returned to work at the pharmacy the very next day after the shooting. She felt that she had to, but she wants other people in her situation to have another option. This weekend on 7 News, we'll fill you in on what she and others are pushing for. And if you want to see change in your community, don't forget to share your ideas with us on our 7 News Facebook page. Hey, it's Wishbone Day! Every year Wishbone Day is celebrated on May 6th across the world. And this is Merrick. He's having his best wishbone day yet. I was waiting for this day. Yeah? I didn't know this would be coming up next time. You didn't know it was coming up? No, sorry. Kroger and his mom, Laura, have teamed up to make this day special for Merrick, surprising his class at Easter Seals with cupcakes and balloons, all yellow. The color has signified the effort to bring awareness to osteogenesis imperfecta, a genetic condition that causes bones to break easily, also known as brittle bones. Do you know what wishbone day is for, guys? Merrick's bones. And what about your brittle bones? Do we want everybody to know? Because they're fragile. Yeah. Merrick was diagnosed in utero. Eight months, he broke his first femur in utero. The outlook was pretty grim at that time. He made it. He's had 48 known fractures so far and five major surgeries. And he's beat every odd that anybody would have ever placed on him. At that moment, it meant eight months. 
Wishbone Day isn't about fundraising, but community awareness and celebrating life with OI. And Merrick's very special because he's the only one in our community that suffers from OI. So um, just seeing you know his successes in life um, is really you know what the big celebration's about. A star. Merrick, do you want to start handing balloons out to your friends? He knows that this is one day a year that everybody um, chooses to really celebrate the condition. It's heartwarming to know that that many people appreciate his spirit as much as I do. <laughs> like all new parents, Ricky and Krista Zambito don't want to stop holding their baby even for a second. But after what it took to just get to this point, they may never put Luca down. We were told that we needed to plan funerals instead of baby showers, um, that we were waiting for the inevitable, which would be for our son's heart to stop. It started with Krista's 20-week ultrasound scan. Something was wrong. The heart was enlarged and it was showing that he had fetal high drops. And I, I had no idea and you know, I started crying. I was so upset and I asked the doctor, you know, what does this mean? The answer, we don't know. A few more tests and then doctors broke the news. The worst feeling and the worst news that you could ever, ever, ever have. Basically, we only told us there's nothing that could be done, that I was going to miscarry. And if she didn't miscarry, doctors said Luciano would never survive. But Ricky and Krista refused to give up on their baby. I looked at him and I said, we have to pray. You know, we, we have to pray about it. And we did. And <laughs> They went to a specialist at McGee Women's Hospital in Pittsburgh. Said you have a very sick baby, but there's hope. You know, we can if we don't do this, then it's going to be bad. This was a blood transfusion, one of many. Little by little, Luca started to flourish. April 27th, Krista had a C-section, and she and Ricky said hello to their son. All of a sudden, we heard a little whimper, whimper. and we looked at each other. We both instantly Just started crying. crying. Um, just so happy. That, just so relieved and just yeah, so happy that he was, that he was here. here. <laughs> and we just feel that we have an absolute miracle here. Just an absolute blessing. Thanksgiving is a day away and for millions of Americans getting home for the holiday could be a big challenge. An elementary school teacher who made misbehaving students stand in the rain as punishment has been reprimanded. Nate, the cabinet to street forum that we told you about several weeks ago is taking place this Thursday evening in Wheeling. A total of eight months have passed since the special grand jury for the Steubenville rape case began meeting to investigate if any more laws were broken. Our legal analyst, West Liberty University, Professor Diana Crutchfield, has been breaking this case down since the beginning and once again joins us live in the studio tonight. Diana, thank you for being here with us. Good evening, Jamie. Let's first talk about the elements of these charges. While most are misdemeanors, there are some felonies. And of course, McVeigh is facing the most serious of these charges. What does the government now have to prove? The legal battle involving two Bridgeport councilmen who allegedly voted on issues that they had a personal stake in was back in court today. But nothing was decided except that there are more delays. Let's go straight to DK Wright live in the 7 Newsroom with the latest. DK? Continuing coverage on that story in just seconds, but first a scary scene after a local miner was trapped on the job. We've told you that studies show West Virginia has the highest drug overdose death rate in the entire country. It's a very sad statistic. Ormet workers, active and inactive, are in for quite a shock. A letter mailed from the Ormet Corporation is on its way to each one. Now, there are a few interesting points to discuss here. First, you mentioned to me earlier the contrast between the voting rights decision and this one. One day, conservatives are striking down an act of Congress. The next day, they're saying, how dare this court strike down an act of Congress? It, exactly. Uh, Tuesday morning, we'll wake up with snow flying around enough to coat the ground. You know, our friends with the local ski businesses get mad when we say <laughs> that we hate the snow so much. So you know what? Right. I'm excited for the snow. <laughs> yeah. well, hopefully, I'm so excited. Hopefully we can get you on some <laughs> skis sometime <laughs> soon. Are you a skier, or snowboarder? I'm a snowboarder. Oh, Snowboards. look out. That's Good right. stuff. So I like the snow. <laughs> I mean, she's cooler than us. She's a that snowboarder. That is. That's exactly yeah. what that means. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the time we have tonight. <laughs> Join us for much more tonight. No Fox Ohio Valley. Join us for 7 News at 11. There's a cute and inventive Halloween costume that one creative father constructed for his daughter 
At uh -huh. night, it looks like a stick figure coming at you. Dad's a skier, and he had created these outfits for when he and his buddies would <laughs> ski at <laughs> night. He just downsized it to fit his daughter. That and a recent cool. video he posted on YouTube has gone viral with almost 200,000 hits. Now, as you can imagine, he's been asked by many people to make them a costume, but he said he would rather show them how to make it. <laughs> I like that. That's actually very funny. That is amazing stuff. Dad, the weather's looking a little bit better right now. Not too bad. It is, and you've got to get down here and get a spot because there are plenty of good ones. We'll be bringing you live coverage from right here in downtown Wheeling all night. We are so excited to be down here. We are waiting for the 27th annual Wheeling Christmas Parade to kick off. It's set to start at 6.30, but look at this. Ex I don't know how much excitement <laughs> you guys can see behind us. If he wins, it's because his is faster. <laughs> You can step up on top box here. Tight race all along and still tonight very close. And we've got our political panel here to talk about that tonight. Sort of breaking down why and different issues that are playing a part in this. Our Jamie Ward is standing by live with the newest information. Jamie, what happened and what are things looking like now? Nate, the newest information that we have at this hour is that the officer that was involved in this crash here along Route 2 was treated and released from Wheeling Hospital. We have confirmed that he is a 25-year veteran of the Wheeling Police Force. His name is Corporal Mike Makris. Pretty banged up after this accident today. You can see some of the damage left behind here. The scene of the accident has been cleared for quite a few hours now, but if you were anywhere around this area earlier today, traffic was bumper to bumper as authorities were cleaning up this mess. The West Virginia State Police are investigating. You're taking a look at video from the scene earlier today. They're trying to figure out what exactly happened. What we do know is that two cars collided. One was a Wheeling police cruiser. The woman driving the other car was also transported to the hospital with unknown injuries. The cruiser obviously hitting this telephone pole behind me head first. Some pretty extensive damage to the front of his car. Police on scene told us that he was responding to reportedly shots fired in the Warwood area. Those reports of shots fired had set schools in Warwood on a code yellow lockdown, which was lifted a short time later when they determined that there were no shots fired. It was had appeared to be a car backfire. But again, at this point, the state police are investigating. They're not releasing much information at this time, but we will stay on this and we'll continue to keep you updated as this story develops. For now, reporting live in North Wheeling, Jamie Ward working for you. Nate.